Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to Jargon Free Help. Although it's nice and sunny outside today, I'm in here doing this podcast. But as soon as I'm done, I'm outside enjoying this lovely sunny weather that we haven't had for quite some time. Anyway, today I want to talk to you about security and also a way of dealing with spam. Now, I know we all keep going on about security as IT guys, but it's something you really do need to pay attention to. And you've probably got your internet security suites to deal with your firewall, your antivirus and your anti-spam. But really, so much of this comes down to a bit of common sense. And that is actually one of your best ways of dealing with it. So if you get emails that look too good to be true or websites that people direct you to that are just too good to be true, don't go to them, don't click on them. You won't believe how many people I hear saying, yeah, it did sound a bit too good to be true and I knew I shouldn't click on it, but I did it anyway. So please just use that as your first port of call. Don't do it. So if you are logging onto a website such as banking or shopping or anything like that that requires a login, then you should be looking out for, firstly, a padlock should appear somewhere on the website. Now in Safari, that's in the top right-hand corner. In Chrome, it's to the right of the address bar and the same as well for Internet Explorer. And in Firefox, you'll see it in the bottom right-hand corner. Somewhere on your browser, you should see a padlock and it should say HTTPS in the address bar. That's what it should start with before the WWWs, not just HTTP. If it doesn't have the S, it's not secure. Don't use it. Also, if you get an email saying that your bank wants you to log in and it gives you a link, don't follow that link. Just go straight to the banking website that you use and that will be a far more secure way of doing your banking. So please, it comes down to be careful. So if the next time you're looking at something and it looks like too good to be true, don't do it. I also mentioned a few weeks ago that there is free software for antiviruses, which are also very important, AVG for Windows and also iAntivirus for the Mac. Go and have a look at that one on free software and that'll give you a bit more detail about it as well. I did say I have a unique way of dealing with spam. What I do is I have a separate email address that I use for registering on websites and also if I happen to be filling out a form in a shop or at an event. And the reason I do that is because that's where most of your spam will come from. They will have picked up your email address from a third party, somewhere that you registered. So a good thing that I do is I keep my personal one separate from this spam email address. So you can use something like Google Mail. Go and register an email address there and you'll then be able to get those emails into that email inbox and then you can have your personal one separate and that should reduce your spam quite a lot. If you are getting a lot of spam you might want to consider changing your email address. Really sometimes that's the only way to deal with it. The only problem is is convincing people and reminding them all the time that your email address has changed but it could well be worth it. There are spam filters but I'm never normally that keen on them and to be quite honest with you, I don't use one because I've done exactly what I said, which is to have two separate emails. So what is this week's app of the week? This week I've been looking at an app called Flickster. It's great for movies, you can see what's coming up, you can also see what's on at your local theatre and it also gives you details of the movies, reviews by other people who have been to it and ratings as well. There's pictures, you can see trailers too and there's just a lot coming up and it also shows you current stuff as well. It does also show you DVDs, what's out and what's coming up as well, so very handy. So if you like movies and DVDs, that's the thing to get. I like it myself and I use it and if I want to go to the movies then I can quickly just pick up my iPhone and say where's the nearest one showing and it gives me all the show times as well. So let's have a look at what's new on our tutorials this week. So this week I've added some new tutorials. Now these are for some of our Mac friends. That's right, for the Apple Mac users I now have some tutorials on there for Spotlight, how to use the dock and a number of other features built into Apple. There are plenty on there for Windows users. I'm going to keep doing for both, but the Mac is certainly becoming more popular and I'm gonna keep adding more and more of those in. So if you know anyone with a Mac who needs a bit of help, then get them to go and have a look at our tutorials. Now these tutorials are for you. So if you do have any suggestions of what you would like to see on our tutorials, then please go to the website, www.jargonfreehelp.com and please go to the contact page and drop me a line. If you need any advice, 
Again, please drop me a line or anything you would like to see on the podcast. So thanks for watching this week. And next week, I'm going to be looking at something that my wife is always going on about. That's Mrs. Schwartz to you. Multitasking. She wants to know why I can't do more than one thing at a time. But she also wants to know what multitasking is on a computer and the iPhone, which has been mentioned a lot. So next week, I'll be taking a look at that. Thanks for watching and happy computing.